Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Control. Let's talk to Greenish. Welcome back, Captain. You are our favorite customer. Now, what can we do for you today? Like pretty much every other time, we're going to sell some stuff and then we're going to buy some like stuff. Sell, Captain? We would like to sell some data on alien life forms. Ninety-four units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you one hundred eighty-eight credits. What would you like to sell, Captain? Well, you're in luck, Greenish, because we found some old Rainbow Worlds for you, so we're going to sell you some of their locations. Your ship's log indicates that you discovered the whereabouts of four of the Rainbow Worlds which so fascinate us. In exchange, we will give you 2,000 credits. Of course, those are the last uh, Rainbow Worlds in the entire game. There were only 10, we've yeah, sold them all already. Like so, there we go. Uh, we've got tons and tons of credits. Do you wish to purchase? So, let's get some fuel. First of all, fill the tanks. Fuel transferred to your vessel. And we'd like to buy information. Oh, wonderful. Captain? And the information we want is uh, data on alien light bombs or alien races. It says that. Following the end of the war, the Androsim began experimenting with interdimensional fatigue, a process which is related to your faster than light drive, but involves dimensions far more alien than hyperspace. They had just made a major breakthrough when they were suddenly wiped out by a race called the Ors, who appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Actually, we don't know what the Ors did to the Androsim. They're just all gone. Oh yeah, thanks for clearing up that, uh, that story for us, Greenish, because of course, um, yeah, the Ors, jeez. Are a mysterious race of IDF beings. IDF meaning interdimensional fatigue. They do not reside in this galaxy, or in fact, anywhere in this universe. While it is true that the Alilu are rarely seen far from the Columbia Star Group, they do make regular secret visits to your world and have done so for centuries. Ever since Earth was stayed shielded, they have focused their attention on the humans aboard the Starbase, many of whom are now members of your crew. Though the Arilu Lanile always smile and are never overtly hostile, we believe that they have a secret agenda which somehow involves your planet, Earth. These secret plans may or may not cause grief and woe to your Earthlings. It's quite late in the story for us to, to be told that. I mean, same with the oars as well. Maybe, you know, you don't actually really need to go to the oars until quite late in the game, so maybe they just don't expect you to go just or something. Under 20 years ago, the brave and suicidal show Fixie annihilated their species by exploding a precursor device, some kind of bomb, in the interior of their sun. The resulting storm of solar flares cooked the light off the show Pixie homeworld, and incinerated over a hundred Urquan dreadnoughts which had just entered the system to conquer the show Pixie in actuality. There are still at least a dozen show Fixie left alive in the galaxy. One or two are at Delta Gorno, guarding the dead hulk of their once beautiful world. Others can be found in box space. So yeah, the reason why we're going through all these alien races is because we've got a lot more alien races than we do historical information. Like so that's the reason we're doing a lot of alien races right now. Um, so that's why you had three there. A pleasure dealing with you, Captain. Thank you, as, as always, Greenish. To your next visit. Yeah, so, um, there we had the Oars, the Aralu, and the Shofixti. So, we knew quite a lot about them already, so, I mean, those were just sort of the bridge to getting to the 
sort of more interesting ones, I guess. I don't know what's coming up, but they weren't very exciting. Um, but yeah, now let's get on with uh, some of the quests we're doing. And the main quest that we've got going on for us right now is that we need to get the Sirene onto this moon in Epsilon Camelopardaris. That has got to be one of the coolest names for a star. Epsilon Camelopardalis. Is it Dalis or Daris? I can't. I can't see because in my editing thing, I, it's too small for me to really see properly. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Dalis. But, um, yeah, let's get back to this moon. Cleared up all the resources, remember. Let's get down there and uh, take the Siren Shuttle to the little thing with Jiggy here. They've opened the they've opened the vault and oh, tons of siren vessels. So apparently there was tons of siren on our ship and they've just all come down and taken all the ships. So pretty simple at the end of the day. So now they're just gonna go all the way back to uh, what was it called? Syrah. No, that was the old one. What's the new one called? Maybe the new one is Syrah. I can't remember. But either way, uh, there we go. We got we got the Siren ships. They're back at the Siren homeworld. We're back at the star base at least. And um, I think they're starting to plan out their attack on the Micon for what they did to their old old world. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Um, of course, the other thing. Uh, so we've pretty we've we've done a big chunk of that quest now, getting that that Siren vessels back to the Siren. And of course, the other thing we need to do now is get up to Draconis because all of the Thradash have gone now and the Elrath, but most importantly, Thradash. So we can go and look for that thing, uh, the Aqua Helix, in the Thradash space, so we can fix the Ultron. Okay, so um, it was a little bit vague. Somewhere in Thradash space, they said. Somewhere in Thradash space. Um, don't know what that means. It means that it's somewhere here. There's a lot of Draconis star systems. Or a lot of, there's a lot of stars in the Draconis star system, so I'm looking for a planet that may look like it's sort of. Do I? So see, I don't know if it. I don't know if it's definitely going to be on their home world. So I don't know if I'm looking for a sort of, a sort of like a watery world. But at the same time, the Thradash didn't look sort of like they sort of look quite rough, didn't they? So I'm thinking they probably don't live on a metal world. No, we don't really need resources either. So let's not go down there. Um, but yeah, pretty much. I'm going to look at all these stars. Um, I'll go from Alpha to Beta, so on and so forth. Um, it might take a while to find the Aqua Helix. It's the last thing we need, I think. Um, so that's definitely, it's definitely a, quite an important piece of the puzzle. Doesn't look like there's anything here. No, I think it's just nothing again. So I don't know. See, the the Draconis kind of look like. They didn't look reptilian, but they sort of look like sort of quite rugged. So I don't know if they're going to be able to live in like sort of. Well, that's that's quite quite a low temperature, 123. So maybe that light blue line. I don't really know what that light blue line means. So I don't know if that. Oh, geez, that's definitely not where they live. Um, so what about here? Nope, definitely not. What about here? Anything here? Nope. Oh jeez, this could take a while. <laughs> okay, on to the next. On to the next. Delta Draconis. Please be something. Somewhere in this star system. Ooh, okay, there we go. We got a green planet. This could be good. Is there something behind there? Yes, there we go. That's a watery world. Now, this looks like it could be Threadash, well, the, the, the Threadash home world. I don't know if there's actually going to be any Threadash left. There probably isn't going to be. Uh, well, they might be. I don't know. Maybe they're just that that the whole um, colonies have died or anything like the Zotfok. But having said that, the Zotfok still have a ring of influence. Influence. So maybe they are completely wiped out. There's a lot of. They are letting us onto the planet, of course. And yeah, there's a lot of destroyed cities there. Look at them. They're all completely, completely devastated. Everyone and everything on this planet has been destroyed. There we go. Proof in the destruction there. There's absolutely nothing on this planet, there's just a bunch of destroyed cities, some of which are just in the middle of the oceans, but never mind. Don't have to worry about that. Um, so there was no... Didn't look like there was anything there, didn't look like there was an actual he Hakwa Helix there. So maybe it is on a different planet. Uh, no, that's not where I wanted to go. So yeah, gonna have to look around all the different planets now. Oh, Jesus, it's just taking such a long time. 
something here. Doesn't look like it. Oh, this is painful. Nope. Again, doesn't look like anything. However, there is a little planet there. I can see. Is that. There we go, okay. This could be promising. It's the first one that's close ish to the star. Zeta Draconis. So I've basically checked the first planet of every star. Because going by this game, there normally is stuff on the first planet. Of ah, there we go, see, there it is. See, pretty much everything in this game is on the first planet of stars. like Or like the first moon or something. So, there it is. Oh, it's quite big. I don't know how we're going to get that in our thing. Oh, we have discovered some sort of shrine at the surface. It's immensely old, 2,000 years. 19 Thredash cultures. From what we have seen, we have learnt that Thredash have risen to starfaring technology in the la last... Uh, oh, they've raised from the Stone Age again and again. So they've basically destroyed themselves over and over again and back into the Stone Age. So that's pretty poor. Uh, but at least they're back starfaring again. Well, they're not anymore, they're dead. Um, but here we go, we've got the Aqua Helix, which is good. So there we go, let's get the Aqua Helix back aboard the ship. It's pretty cool actually, it looks, looks like a sort of piece of DNA inside, doesn't it? With the sort of entrance. It's quite nice. Right, let's, let's, let's take it up. We got the thing now, from the primordial world. I should have guessed, I told you it would be something like a primordial world that the Threadash lived on. Um, so, we got the Aqua Helix, we got the Shireen, Sirene shuttles, the Shi- the Shireen? Siren. Back, uh, the, the, the shuttle landed and, um, got the Siren ships. Jeez, that's hard to say without saying Shireen. Um, but yeah, there we go, we got two big objects done in this game. So, awesome. So, now that we've got the uh, Siren ships back at the Starbase, let's go over there and um, go and talk to Talana. Let's just save the game, um, because I haven't done so in quite a while. And let's go. Let's get to the Starbase. Good. Now we can proceed with our plan for revenge against the Mycon. From our analysis of the Deep Child Fragments you showed to us, and a review of the recorded Mycon transmissions from the war, we've established the kind of world the Mycons desire for their hideous deep children. They need a planet like your Earth, or our Syra, one rich in water and oxygen, and possessing a molten active mantle. Our plan is to lure the Mycons to such a planet, and then attack them when they least expect it. We know of just such a world. When the Urquan were analyzing their massive planetary data to find a new home for my people, one of the close candidates, ranked just below Gaia, was a blue world orbiting close to the star Organon. Captain, we need your services again. Here is what you must do. You must go to the Mycon and tell them of this world. They will find that the world is suitable. And when they go to Organon, we shall be there, waiting for them. Then, we shall destroy them. I'll miss you, Talana. Don't worry, my human. We will be together again. Someday. That's right, Talana, it's our destiny. It's our true destiny. So, with that in mind, guys, let's go out. Fight for the Sirene. Well, not fight. <laughs> to, sort of. We, we just have to talk to them, really. We just have to talk to the Sirene. Just not talk to the Sirene. We have to talk to the Mycon. Basically, just say, go to this planet. It's really cool. It's a really cool planet we've uh, we got there. So, yeah. Hopefully, there's uh, nothing living there as well. That'd be quite bad to start a little war with some other race which the Micron are about to obliterate. Um, let's just hope that doesn't happen. So yeah, we've got to get to the homeworld of the uh, the Micron. I can't remember which one it is. There's quite a few different shattered worlds. I'm pretty sure it's the one at Beta Scorpi. I think it's Beta Scorpi. Or Epsilon Scorpi, maybe. Yeah, I think it's Epsilon Scorpi. Um, but yeah, we just have to get to there. Um, oh yeah, Beta Scorpi I think is the one where 
the thing, the Shafix, he said he saw something. The shining light. So, I think that's the, the idea is to get down to that planet. So right now there's a massive, there's some guarding, people guarding the that planet. So I think this is to distract the Micon for the benefit of the Siren and also for the benefit of us so that we can get down to that planet and find out what's really going on. So yeah, I think that's the whole idea. So, there's a lot of Micon here. Oh jeez, oh god, I've actually attracted an absolute ton of them. Oh, here we go. It's a race. Can I get round there? Oh god, that was close. Okay, I hate it when it switches things like that. Oh god, that was close. Okay, I need to get away. Okay, there's a lot of them chasing me now. About 30. Okay, let's go. Oh god, there's more there. Okay. Can we get in? No. We need to drag them away, I think. We need to drag them all the way. Oh, there's even more. There's even more there. Can we get inside? Okay, there we go. Oh, look at the entire army. He's like chasing after me. Save the game. Save the game in case something goes wrong. Because it might be quite difficult to get out of here. Okay, there we go. Let's talk to the Micon. Trick them into going to that other planet.